Hey, welcome back. We're going to derive Bohr's wavelength equation for hydrogen in this video, but before we get started, we need to kind of go back into where this equation came from. Now, I've already made a video about Bohr and energy levels where we talked about how electrons, what happens is you do something to cause this transition, some addition of energy. So basically where we're going to start this video is this video basically starts with an excited electron. And so we've talked about this again already in another video. What does this electron want to do? This electron wants to transition. Now this electron could transition back to the second or it could transition all the way back to the first energy level. More energy obviously gets released if it transitions all the way. Now, either way we go with it, what's going to happen is as this electron falls, since the energy cannot be created or destroyed, kind of so to say, it means that a photon will be released. And here's that photon I'm drawing, moving as a wave. And the whole purpose of this Bohr's wavelength equation that we're going to derive is literally to find that wavelength. So in other words, if you tell me an N initial, if you tell me where you started, and you tell me where you end up, so in this case, we start in one and we finish in the first, then I can figure out what wavelength. And I can figure it out very easy. Now, I'm not a big advocate of this wavelength equation thing, but hey, it's uh, in the book, so we'll go through and make sure that we've got it. So anyway, I'm going to drink a sip of coffee. Mmm, refreshing. And let's get started with it. Well, here's the thing. This is the whole foundational idea. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so I got more room. The whole foundation of this problem is this whole, let's draw our two energy levels again. And I can't even remember where I just went to in this problem. Three and one, okay. So this whole idea, one, two, three, my energy levels. So we are starting up here, and we are transitioning back down to this, we'll call it a ground state in here. So anyway, and we're going to release a photon as we do that. So the big thing in this is we're going to say that we have some energy initial at this point. Now, that energy we have initially, that energy we have initially, and this is what, if I was giving you a bonus, I'd give you this. That energy we have initial would be equal to the energy of this photon. Now, that's HF. Would be equal to that photon's energy plus this energy it has after it has fallen. So, the energy initial would be equal to HF plus energy final. Now, this is where I would start you. Like if this was a bonus and I was going to say, okay, start deriving. So what are we trying to derive to? Well, hey, I'll give you that. What does Bohr's wavelength equation look like? I'm going to scroll way down here. Surely I'll have room. Bohr's wavelength equation looks like this. 1 over lambda equals 1.097 times 10 to the 7. 1 over N, now i got to see if I can even remember. See, I'd derive it if I need it. 1 over N F square, there we go, minus 1 over N I square. And all this equation is good for, and when this video is over, we'll use it for something. All this equation is good for is what we're talking about here. If we know two ends, two energy levels, where we start and where we go, then we can find the wavelength of the photon that's given off. So I want to take, and this is where I'm coming from, I want to take this initial starting equation I put in the box, and I want to derive, in other words, I want this guy out of it. So I'm giving you the beginning and the end. You just got to fill in the middle of it. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do something. I'm going to get all the E's on the same side. So that means I want to subtract EF from both sides of that equation. I want to get the E's together. Now, I'm also going to rewrite it so that it says HF equals. I just like the way that looks better. EI minus EF. So this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to get the E's together, and I'm going to get the HF on the other side. Now, at some point, you need to be going, okay, well, Mr. Cole, but 
we don't even have a we're trying to get a wavelength equation and sir there is no wavelength in my equation you're right I, I agree with you so what I'm going to do is this I'm going to use the velocity equation for wave c equals lambda f and now I'm going to look at something I've got an f here and I've got an f in this equation up here so I'm going to solve this guy for f I'm going to divide both sides by lambda and now I'm going to substitute that back into this wavelength equation. So instead of F, I can rewrite that as HC, so basically a little algebra 1, H over lambda. But you know I'm not going to stop. In another video, we learn if you want to find the energy for any electron inside of a hydrogen atom, we can just use this little negative RH over N square equation. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take him and I'm going to substitute him for my EI and my EF. So I'm going to substitute. So let's go back up here. So in place of EI, I'm going to write negative RH over NI square minus negative RH over NF square. And believe it or not, I'm done. The rest of this problem is nothing but cleanup. So, and what do I mean by cleanup? Well, I'll show you. So, this is HC over lambda. And I'm going to factor the RH out because both of these terms up here share an RH. I can just factor him out. RH times, and what I'm left with, now I want you to notice something. I've got, change my color, I've got minus minus. So that means this NF becomes a plus. So I'm going to write it first. So this becomes 1 over NF squared. And then I've got that minus here. So minus 1 over NI squared. Now if you're looking, I'm already getting this thing to be pretty dang close to what the answer is supposed to be. Well, you're right. I'm almost home. The only thing I want to do left I want to get rid of the HC that's up on top of this equation how can I get rid of it well I can multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over HC and so when I do that that's going to cancel the HC's on the left side and I'll be left with 1 over lambda which is exactly like the answer is and I got RH over HC 1 over nf squared minus 1 over, and I'm done. Now, you might be looking at this going, wow, that was horrible looking. Let's see if we can draw a little better parenthesis than that. Ah, red. So you might be looking at this, and you're going, okay, great. But there's just one thing. You've got this 1.097 times 10 to the 7, and up here it says RH. Well, remember something. RH is a constant, 2.0179 times 10 to the negative 18 over h which is a constant 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 times c which is a constant 3 times 10 to the 8 or if you allow me to show off 299,792,458 ah who's showing off oh this guy anyway these are all constants which means there's no reason to do it every time it's going to come out to that number so rh over hc is 1.097 and this is all it takes what, what have i got one two three steps to derive this entire equation that's it that's all it takes so i've substituted c over lambda in for my f and in for my ei and ef i did this negative rh over bohr's energy level i substituted and that is it well i got an idea how about we actually use this equation so a second ago we had this electron. It was in the third. And here's the second. And here's the first energy level. And this electron was up here, and it transitions all the way back down here. We'll say that's its ground state, maybe. And when it does, it emits a photon. Choo! And so what's the wavelength to that photon? Well, all we got to do is 1 over lambda equals 1.097 times 10 to the 7 times 1 over, what was it, nf squared minus 1 over ni squared. So all we got to do, there's our equation. Ain't got a lot of use, but we can use it. 1 over lambda equals 1.097 times 10 to the 7 times 
1 over 1 square, because that's where I fell, minus in initial, which is where did I start? I started up here in the third energy level. So 1 over 3 square. And now I can work this problem. Where's my Casio at? Come here, buddy. So there's my trusty Casio calculator. So let's put this in here. 1.097, 10 to the 7, times 1 over 1 square. Yes, I know. I put that in the calculators for the sake of the video. Please don't judge. Uh, over 1, da, 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 over 3 square, which is an amazing 9. So it's basically 1 minus 1 9 times that. And look at this awful looking answer 975,000, 9,751,000, 9,751,111. .1 now, if you've done any of these problems so far, you should know that does not look like any wavelength we've seen in any question. Well, that's because this is not your answer. You haven't found wavelength. All you have found is 1 over the wavelength. So to get the wavelength, I need to take the reciprocal of this number. So what is the reciprocal? Hopefully, if you're watching this, you know what a reciprocal is. But if not, a reciprocal ain't nothing but 1 divided by that number. Now, I've got a reciprocal button on my calculator. X negative 1 equals up. Ah, and let's see if it'll give me an answer. Boom. 1.02 times 10, 1.03 times 10 negative 7. And that's a pretty good looking number, 1.03 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, which would be 103 10 to the negative 9, which would be a nanometer, which I like giving my answers in nanometers. And bam, we got it. Now, a very good quick little question would be, can you see this photon? Well, you got to remember something. We can see from 400 to 700 nanometers, which means we are not going to see this guy. This is, if you remember your Roy G. Biv, this guy is actually shorter than any light we can see. Therefore, since he's shorter, this is a UV photon that we're looking at in this problem. Anyway, I hope this has gave you some idea on how to use this and derive Bohr's wavelength equation. Uh, Happy deriving to all of you out there, wherever you are.